a very specialized gunsmithing job, is reboring a rifle barrel to a larger caliber. Let me show you how this is done. Here's an old Winchester 1885 low wall in the long obsolete caliber of 32 rimfire. This gun was made in 1891 and the bore is badly pitted. Collectors might call this an old brown gun as all of the original finish has turned brown and not much collector's value remains. However, it's a good solid rifle and I'd like to shoot it. The barrel will be rebored and rechambered to 357 Magnum, but I'll shoot mostly 38 special lead bullets through it. Since this gun started as a rim fire, I'll also have to convert the breech block to center fire. The first thing to do is to completely disassemble and inspect the rifle. I'll remove the sights, being sure to drift them out from left to right. Then, using a barrel vise and action wrench, I'll remove the barrel. Reboring is a very specialized gunsmithing job, so I'll send this barrel out to have it rebored. Let me give you a simplified view of the reboring process. First, the bore is drilled and reamed for the larger diameter, in this case, from 32 to 35 caliber after which it's hand lapped to remove all of the reamer marks. Then, new rifling grooves are cut one at a time with multiple passes to deepen each groove to a depth of about five thousandths. It's slow, painstaking work. Finally, the rifle bore is hand lapped to remove all of the marks left by the rifling cutter. Now that the barrel is back with a brand new bore, I can do my part to finish the project. I'm chambering it in 357 Magnum using a precision reamer in the lathe. The chamber end of the barrel is centered in a four-jawed chuck using a plug gauge with the muzzle end held in a spider. A floating reamer holder is used to keep the reamer aligned with the bore. Using plenty of oil, I'll cut the chamber about a hundred thousandths at a time backing out the reamer and clearing the chips. As I get closer, I'll check my progress with a go gauge, which should end up just flush with the back of the barrel. Since the barrel makes contact with the breech block, this will give me the correct headspace. The next step is to recrown the muzzle. I've refixtured the barrel in the lathe for this process. The original crown was flat, which I'll preserve. Just need to remove a few thousands to clean up the face. The crown is finished by chamfering the muzzle at the edge of the bore. I've offset the cutter at 45 degrees to make this cut. The final step is to break the outside edge of the barrel. To do this, I've reversed the rotation of the lathe and place the cutter on the back side of the barrel. Converting the breech block from rim fire to center fire involves drilling a new hole in the breech block and making a new firing pin. The extractor must also be modified to work with the larger 357 Magnum case. For posterity reasons, I'll mark over the original caliber and put the new caliber marking on the left barrel flap. I'll also leave a message of the work I've performed on the bottom of the barrel under the fore end. The old finish must be removed for the marking process to work. I'll use some tape with the correct shapes cut out and simply bead blast off the old finish. The marks are made using a machine from marking methods. It uses a process of electrochemical etching. I've printed a stencil that just needs to be taped to the barrel. Touching the marking pad to the barrel etches the mark through the stencil.
a bit of plum brown will touch it up. And after putting it back together, I'll head for the range.